I'm Cynthia Schiller. Please like and subscribe. We're going to talk about a couple different things about the narcissist, uh, how to tell when that narcissistic discard is going to come. Um, often uh, a real big red flag is the ghosting and the silent treatment. So if you start to notice that they're doing that a little bit more or 100% ghosting you, the discard is uh, coming. Also, if they start putting in zero effort, a lot of times in the beginning during the love bombing stage, they're all about doing things for us, um, e either taking us places or compromising and doing activities, um, but they start to put in zero effort. And that's where this discard, uh, be careful, that probably uh, is going to happen soon. Also, the devaluation increases. So they start nitpicking at things. They start cutting you down more. Uh, they're unappreciative of the things that you do. Um, they just expect more and more without giving anything back. Also, you're going to start to notice that they'll be emotionally absent to where they're not really um, even faking being concerned about uh, how your day was, um, if everything's going okay, if you need help with things, they're just completely absent emotionally. Often uh, there's some signs that there might be a new supply. Sometimes it can, you know, best friend to best friend. Uh, it can be um, in romantic relationships, but they have some sort of new supply that they're being drawn to. And it's just giving them a heightened uh, either challenge or supply, uh, ego stroke. Also, you can start to notice some dramatic changes uh, in their attitude, um, the way they're uh, texting you. Are they uh, intermittent a lot more? Are they um, absent more often? Uh, you know, if it's um, somebody might um, be getting ready to cheat. So they're going to either, you know, work out more, change their clothing, change their hair, shower more, uh, sometimes um, shower when they get home. Uh, and if that's out of their character, um, sometimes you might do it. You had a sweaty day at work, but um, often they, they want to get the scent of the other person off of them. Um, also, uh, once you start getting stronger, um, in, in doing things that are helping you grow. The narcissist loves to knock people down. Uh, so the stronger you're getting, whether it's in your faith or in social clubs or friendships or even at your job, um, if you're fulfilling your passions, um, they see that as a challenge. And sometimes, you know, if they can't knock it down, um, instead of encouraging you to keep growing, uh, often they'll discard and find a weaker person. Um, and this is one thing that's kind of interesting though, is they do like strong people to break down. Um, but if you stay at a strong point in your life, because they'll, they'll pick you out at the, at the uh, correct challenge for them. Uh, so if you're like this strong when you meet them, they, they can see that they're gonna be able to knock you down. But if you keep getting stronger and stronger, it's more and more threatening to them. They have low self-esteem. They might start thinking that you're gonna leave them. Um, and there are also uh, discard signs are decreased hoovering. Maybe they uh, would stop by every weekend uh, to try and hook up with you or to talk to you. Uh, and now they're starting to do that less and less, or maybe they did it daily. Uh, some narcissists love to blow up your phone. Um, also through gaslighting, um, they're, they're going to start doing gaslighting more, smear campaigns. They're going to start to blame you um, for every little thing, whether you're right or in the wrong. Um, so that's a sign of the discard. They're, they're completely starting to devalue you. Uh, and that mask is going to start to fall. Um, you're going to see their true colors. And, you know, sometimes we wonder why do the narcissist end up discarding people? Um, you know, you would think that they would cherish certain things that were in their life, people who were trying to support them. But um, we have to understand that this relationship was never a true relationship. Uh, the narcissist made us feel like they're that we were their whole world. And that's often really apparent within intimate relationships. But the reality is, um, you know, the narcissist uh, just wanted to. Um, kind of fill a void and they feel like they're they're just seeking out their next hit uh their next hit of energetic supply and they'll see people as tools and they're easy to throw out for the narcissist and and that's really hard so when a narcissist tells us that they love us what they're actually meaning is that they love what we do for them um and they also love that we love them 
So it's all uh, turned around on, on them. And I saw that with uh, my second narc, because I had actually said to him, you love that I love you. And that's what our love was. That's what our relationship was. And it was, it was the strangest thing to even say that to somebody, you love that I love you. And uh, it, it was just a, a weird thing that, that came over me where it's like, what, is, what is this? You know, we've been um, dating and uh, intimate and just building this relationship. And I still had that feeling like this is all one-sided. So if you start to feel that, um, evaluate uh, if you want to stay in these relationships. So what's interesting about the narcissist is their true self was cut off when they were younger. Um, it's kind of went into shutdown mode. And so they have to create this false self. We all need to identify with something in our lives, who we are, whether it's, you know, what our religion is, what our passion is, you know, do we want to be a parent, we have to know who we are, so we can guide ourselves through life, through our lives. So the narcissist, they, they don't know who they are. So they create I don't know, something that sounds good to them. Why not? And they just go after that in life, but it, it's not who they really are, you know? And I did a video, you know, where I could pretend I'm Princess Diana and, and you know, play it up to the hilt, but that's not who I am in my soul. My soul at the end of the day, even if it was a cool experience, my soul is still going to be empty because I'm like, people like me because they thought I was Princess Diana, but that's not who I am. So you, you're, you're left empty, you might have a good experience, but it doesn't fill your soul. So that's kind of what the narcissist is going through is like good experiences, my soul is still empty. So they're just going to keep going on uh, trying to fill this soul that they have. Um, often, um, you know, they, they uh, are kind of like, uh, addicted to this supply, this narcissistic supply, that's their drug of choice. And um, without empathy, without a conscience, they'll do say whatever they need to, uh, just to get that supply, because it, they are addicts, they're, they're fuel addicts. And it's almost at any cost. That's why they'll lie, uh, they'll cheat, they'll, they'll just do whatever. Uh, they're, um, kind of spontaneous in a way, uh, if a certain opportunity presents it self, um, they'll go with it without thinking about the consequences, the people that they're going to hurt. And they often will ditch people, not, not even look back on what they did. And uh, this discard, um, you know, if you're worried about the new supply, these narcissistic cycles just continue on and on and on. Um, the new supply is going to go through exactly what you went through. And um, they uh, like to idealize in the beginning. And, um, you know, sometimes... Uh, there'll be some incident that happens, whether you set a boundary or you disagreed with them. So that's when the devaluation comes in. They'll invalidate you, um, talk in word salads, confuse you. And then, um, you know, if, if we leave them, uh, they'll probably hoover back. Sometimes uh, they'll just discard us, cut us off. And uh, sometimes, not always, but there's a good possibility that they're going to hoover back just to kind of stroke their ego. They often say, you can't live without me. You won't find anybody better than me. And uh, just be cautious that it's all a game. So during that silent treatment, um, you know, they push you away. Um, kind of, uh, I push you away because I want you to pull me closer. And that's really hard on somebody though. You know, we want to just be together but they need their ego stroked more so they push us away so we come even more at them with like love or attention and it keeps us in a state of anxiety and if you guys can comment below on um how you felt in these narcissistic relationships uh i felt like i was walking on eggshells very anxious very confused and um you know, we often are the ones that apologize and it makes us feel like we have to um, 
you know, make everything okay again. We start feeling like things are our fault or we take on uh, the abusive words that they're saying. We're like, yeah, you're right. I, I'm not doing what I should, even though we are. Um, they, they confuse us. Uh, and this whole game is just based on, um, they want us to be dependent on them so they can mold us and use us. And it, it's the, the forming of the trauma bond. So during the abuse cycle, uh, this narcissist will pull back their attention and their affection as a way of punishing us. Then they'll give us some little reward, kind of like Pavlov's dog, where they'll breadcrumb us so they can train us or mold us. And we become accustomed to thinking that um, the narc is our form of happiness, that that's what makes us happy in life. We forget about all the other things because we, in a sense, become obsessed with this person. And we, we lose um, the other parts in life that are to be brought bringing us happiness um, because often we're isolated from friends and family so we don't have that happiness um, anytime we want to talk about work um, it's cut down so we don't have that bond with them um, and we, we just start going into that trauma bond which is really hard to break so the longer you stay in these relationships the the harder it is to snap out of it, the longer it'll take to heal. So the longer you wait to decide what you're gonna do, um, the more damage you're doing to yourself. And I did a video on uh, if you have children with the narcissist, um, be careful. A lot of times we stay because of the kids, but remember narcissistic abuse causes brain damage and you don't want that for your kids. So uh, really think about that. And you really want to be with somebody who's just starting to put in uh, zero effort. A lot of times, um, you know, as far as the narcissist is concerned, uh, they, they just want us to take away their pain. They want to be worshipped. They, they feel that, you know, we have to do everything that they say. We're, we're not allowed to set boundaries. And that's hard to live in life um, because now we're starting to uh, feel afraid that we're going to get discarded. So we kind of lessen our boundaries and it's changing who we are and um you know uh if we try and take a stand that's when we get kind of like punished um so narcissists uh you know they're emotionally void and it's really sad you know because at the beginning um uh, they had this false image that they were parading around um, of this confident, sweet, amazing, energetic, loving person. And all of a sudden something just switched. Uh, a lot of times it can happen uh, like almost instantly sometimes or over a month, but um, it, it can happen so quickly. You can be in a 40 year uh, marriage and all of a sudden, the next day it's like wait you're packing up and leaving um if they even tell you because narcissists are known for just uh ghosting um sometimes they might talk to you because they have to figure out um bills or how to deal with the children or splitting the house or, or whatever but um if you're just in like a dating relationship comment below how many times you've been ghosted uh today's society is even worse than what happened uh years back but even with texting you would think they could at least text uh they should talk in person but um a lot of times they don't even text i mean how easy is it to text somebody it's over you know i'm sorry i have to move on like they don't even give you acknowledgement so all along this time our feelings have been invalidated and then it's even worse in in the breakup to where they couldn't even take the time of day to uh, i don't know appreciate what we did give you know thanks for a couple great years it's just not working out but i wish you well often they just ghost so if they do have a new supply um you know they're going to do the same damage to them and narcissists love to flaunt that new supply all over social media and and they do that to sometimes hurt people sometimes to brag uh to kind of 
self-verified their lie that they're the happiest person in the world, even though it's not true. And, you know, if you ever wonder, are they really getting a better version of the, uh, the narcissist? Is the narcissist being better to the new supply? Probably uh, not really in their actions, maybe in spending a little bit more money or spending a little bit more time, but they're still going to uh, do the same same damage to them. Uh, they're going to start ghosting and uh, belittling and driving that new supply crazy. So it might seem like they're changing, but, you know, it, they're going to give that new supply a discard too. So just find your strength to move on. Um, you know, no contact is good. Don't accept the Hoovers. Uh, don't reverse Hoover where you bring yourself back into the toxic relationship. And, you know, if you're wondering if your narcissist is going to uh, do a Hoover on you, um, it, it, it depends. It depends on where they are in life. Uh, sometimes Hoovers can come 30 years down the road. I had that happen 30 years later. And um, don't wait for it. Uh, don't look forward to being sucked into a toxic relationship, know your self-worth and uh, just keep healing. And I will see you in the next video. Topic requests are always welcome, one-on-ones, and I'll see you in the next video.